Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, we're gonna go ahead and show you this amazing new product that I've been selling the Airstream. It is an onboard generator, but it's not the one you probably think. Remember, if you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. So while this video is mainly directed towards Airstream owners and how to install this generator into an Airstream, um, it's still a, a lot of the information in here is applicable across all travel trailers, fifth wheels, motorhomes, class Bs, class Cs, etc. Um, I guarantee you're going to learn at least one thing while watching this video. It is a long one, so stay through to the end and you're going to learn a lot. But uh, let's just get right to it. Let's talk about this generator, what it is. Where I got it from. Now, if you don't already know, uh, the Onan brand generators that are out there, which pretty much dominate the RV world for generators and gener on onboard generators and generator sales, the Onan is a brand from Cummins. So everyone thinks that Onan is a Cummins engine. Well, it's not, okay? It's actually a Westinghouse generator, just rebranded as Onan, which is great. Westinghouse is still a great brand of generators, don't get me wrong, but the big name that everyone loves and thinks, oh my God, these are the best generators in the world, is Cummins. Those are diesel generators and diesel engines, and that is not what an Onan is. Um, Onan is a, basically a rebranded Westinghouse, which again, it's still a great generator, don't get me wrong, but I'll tell you that the technology and the effort that they put into building this generator is because Onan has dominated the industry for so long that uh, this company said, hey, we need to do something different. We need to provide a product that is not only better than the Onan, um, more efficient, price point is way better, more affordable, um, a, a dual fuel. I mean, there's just so many things about it, but let's just get right into it. So as most Airstream owners probably know, there is pretty much one option. If you want to do an onboard generator, you have one option, and that is the Aircrafters uh, custom mount that fits the Onan 2500 watt generator. Now that generator is about $4,300 retail all day long sometimes more expensive sometimes a little bit less uh and then i think the aircrafters uh mount is like 13 to 1700 dollars range something like that and that's just for those two pieces not to count for anything else um diy install and buying your own material or getting it professionally installed so we're talking upwards of six thousand dollars for an onboard generator and that's just the basic couple of materials you know there's tons of little stuff that has to happen still um which actually let's talk about that real quick because the, the number one thing with an onboard generator for an airstream is you have to have to have to do the three inch lift on your airstream and you have to make sure that your trailer is riding nice and level okay i have a really nice hitch that my <clears throat> my truck uh, i don't have airbags on my truck or anything like that so the truck rides a little bit low um, so i have a nice hitch to keep this thing perfectly level when going down the road i have the three inch lift and i also did 16 inch tires or 16 inch wheels and then you know so it it made a little bit more of a difference there maybe three quarters of an inch or so but um i did that all in preparation for doing this generator now you got to do the same thing for the own in setup with the aircrafter system but uh this new generator that i have in the back of my truck right now which i'll show you guys here in just a minute is from a company called rvmp and they have a couple locations right now i'm currently in columbus ohio um and uh, we're going to get to work here today but uh, they also have a location in elkhart indiana and their generator is a 4,000 watt generator it takes up almost the exact same space as the onan 2500 watt generator uh, the onan is an inverter so is this one they're both inverter generators that means they're quieter however you have 2500 watts with the onan versus 4000 watts with the rvmp generator uh, the rvmp generator is also a dual fuel so you can have it set up to your propane of course bam good to go but you can also use a fuel tank and I, we're going to do tests with all this but you can take a fuel can and just put it underneath your airstream and put a little hose in it it'll self prime and suck gas out of that gas can and be able to run off of gasoline as well as a backup yeah the other big thing too is you know going from a 2500 watt generator to now this 4000 watt generator again both inverters upgraded to dual fuel um but the weight okay um the weight i want to say is almost identical it might be plus or minus about five pounds but you're getting an extra 1500 watts of available power on a 2500 watt onan generator you can run one air conditioner that is it that's all you're ever going to run 
Um, with the 4000 watt, you can run both air conditioners all day long without issue. Aside from just running your air conditioners, you can also be recharging your system, which is one of the big reasons I'll be using this is to recharge my very, very massive battery bank whenever uh, you know I don't have enough solar or don't have enough DC to DC charging, whatever the case is, and I need to supplement, I wanna recharge my batteries, I'm gonna have 4000 watts of available power to recharge the battery bank. Now, I've already done some prep work to the RV. I already went ahead and did my automatic transfer switch, which I'm gonna put that here in the video of how to do the automatic transfer switch. So that's already in the RV ready to go for when I actually do mount up the generator, which that's kind of the plan here today. Let's just talk about some of the materials you're going to need when doing the automatic transfer switch portion of the generator. Essentially, this is like the generator prep that a factory would do on a big fifth wheel or motor home is they would have all this stuff already installed in the coach and basically have a box ready for a generator if you didn't want to order a generator from the factory, but you wanted the generator prep. Okay, so basically we have the automatic transfer switch right here. Okay, shore power is going to come in on the bottom side, generator power is going to come in on the top side, and out is going to be... Uh, you know, your, your, your typical shore power connection. We're gonna talk about the wiring later. We have a all weather box. Okay, I'm using a plastic box because I don't want any kind of uh, corrosion, uh, metal on metal, anything like that. So that's why I chose to use a PVC plastic type box. I got a couple liquid tight connectors. That way these connectors that are gonna go through here are gonna be watertight and it's gonna connect to my uh, soft conduit. I got PVC straps so that this can keep my conduit strapped up to the bottom of the RV. And of course I got a couple of uh, connectors that help uh, connect the electrical um, on these <coughs> connections here coming in and coming out of the uh, automatic transfer switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and get some uh, prep work done to this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my connectors uh, already you know, installed on here. I'm gonna use my, my big three quarter inch ones for the 50 amp in and 50 amp out. I'm gonna use the smaller one, uh, which is you know half inch or three is depending on what you wanna call it um, here for the generator. Cause the generator wiring is a little bit smaller. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing to my box here. I'm going to get the plug set in there. Um, that's just because of the type of box I got. If you can get a fully sealed box, you don't need a plug, but I'll get that sealed and I'll get my liquid tight connector uh, drilled, figure out exactly where I want to get those um, so that those are all prepped and ready to go. So all I'm doing here on my actual like generator connection box, where I'm going to make the generator come in and then this will go out to the automatic transfer switch um, is I'm drilling the sides. Okay. And I'm just using my step bit. Okay. Which again, uh, find this type of stuff on Amazon and that way my liquid tight connector can go right in and our metal ring will go on there and that'll be nice and tight with a rubber gasket on it so that it is uh, an actual weather tight seal. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then this is just an example of the conduit. The conduit basically, you know, the wires and everything go through and your conduit goes in there. And then you, know, you gotta un untwist this, shove it in, twist it down, and that creates that nice uh, weather tight seal there. Now here is my conduit uh, that I made up here. Okay, I basically just have a uh, 10 gauge THHN wire. I got a black, a white, and a green. So you have a hot leg, a neutral, and a ground going into half inch uh, conduit. And I did a 25 foot section to make sure I had plenty of room to work with when I uh, route this thing up on the bottom side of the rig here. So essentially, this is where the generator is gonna mount, is right up in here. So I'm gonna mount this box up here and then run the conduit down and bring it up inside where my um, shore power comes in. Now the shore power connection is what I'm going to undo and take the original shore power connection and put that on the output side of the automatic transfer switch. I'm gonna run a new set of wire. There's a little two foot section from here into the transfer switch, which is basically all sitting right on the back side of this wall right up here. And I'll show you on the inside what that looks like. But uh, so that's that. So, and uh, again, our conduit is gonna come up and in and it's gonna go inside over there where that little piece of PVC is at. Uh, I'm gonna take that out and that's where my conduit's gonna come in and feed the automatic transfer switch from the generator. So uh, here in the bathroom of the Airstream, uh, you can see where the wheel well is at. And I basically just removed the uh, little piece of backing to this cabinet out. And you can see, so here's our shore power coming in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this all out. So this will then be my output of the uh, automatic transfer switch because the automatic transfer switch is basically gonna sit right here. So that'll be the output. I'm gonna run a new wire from there 
into the automatic transfer switch. And then the conduit coming in for the generator basically comes in, you can see where that PVC is at right there. That's basically gonna come in right here. And again, I'll just tie it right up here into the automatic transfer switch. Now I'm not saying every single Airstream is gonna be like this, obviously different layouts are gonna be a little bit different, but you know, essentially if you can find where your shore power comes in and take out cabinetry or whatever it is that's in the way there, you can get to it and fit everything back there. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect my shore power. And we're going to undo these four screws right here. And this is just gonna come right out and our electric is gonna be on the back side and we'll disconnect all it. And then now that new electric will go to the automatic transfer switch. So like I said, four screws and the whole thing just comes right out. There's a nice little gasket, which this gasket's still in good shape. So I'm gonna just reuse it. But now we gotta go ahead and take out some of these screws on the inside and then this will come back and we'll be able to access our wiring. Okay, so I went ahead and just removed those two screws that were in the inside in here. And then this white cap pulls back and now we have our wiring exposed. I can uh, loosen up this, so it'll loosen everything and loosen up our four points of connection here um, for our two hots, which are red and black, our bare, which is the copper, uh, which is green, uh, ground, and then the white is neutral back there, okay? Okay, so after I got the wires disconnected, I fed the old one back inside because that's going to the automatic transfer switch. And now this is my new little two foot section that I got of the six three wire with the ground. It's the exact same type of wire, red, black, white, and a bare copper. So now just opposite of how I took those out, I put them back in, red, black, neutral, and uh, ground. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, uh, that white piece back on the back. So here underside where the uh, generator is gonna mount is where we're putting this um, junction box so we can wire the generator in. So the generator is gonna come in from the left and out to the right is going to the automatic transfer switch. That way this is done. And when you go to put the generator in, you can just wire it up inside that box and it's nice and weather tight. From there, we're gonna run the conduit down the body of the ARV back towards the wheel well. All right, so we're back inside now. I got the shore power in and here is the new shore power inside. Here is the old shore power. This is gonna to go to the output side of the automatic transfer switch. So that's gonna come in over here and get connected here. And the new shore input is gonna come here and get connected right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this wired up and try and get this thing mounted in place. And then we'll have the generator to do once we get the wiring ran all the way for that. All right, so I have my uh, outlet power already wired up and I tightened up the connector there. So that is real nice and tight. And now I've been just working this in place um, getting this wire that goes to the shore power inlet, um, just kind of run through it because this six gauge wire is very, very difficult to, to work with. But now that I got this all done, I'm gonna go ahead and get this set right here on this wall and mount it in. Automatic transfer switch is mounted. I got the four mounting screws tied on there and now that thing is nice and secure. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the shore inlet side all trimmed up and wired up and then we'll just have the generator left to go. All right, so our shore power side is in and we have the out going and I already connected to shore power and you see the contactor went ahead and sucked in. So it is allowing power through right now and the coach has power. Now, next we just gotta get the generator uh, conduit finished up and then that will come in here and wire up to there. Okay, so what I did instead of bringing it in where that PVC pipe was back over there and uh, having it go through the wheel well, I brought it in much, much sooner. So it came, comes through the wheel well up here now. I just drilled a hole for it to come in and it comes in, goes back, and now I have it sitting up here, ready to get wired up. All right, now the generator is wired up. See, I got my hot leg, my neutral, and my ground going down. I got the connector all tightened up. So now all that's left is for the lid to go on. That's that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my cabinet back together here, and uh, we are wired up. So now you can see my junction box is sitting there ready to go for the uh, generator. Uh, I gotta tighten that connection up. But uh, other than that, the conduit just goes all the way down the side of the RV, comes all the way in right there behind the shock. Uh, and again, it's it's up above, it's not touching anything, it's not gonna touch anything, it's moving up, over, and inside the RV. The generator as itself um, comes in a cradle already with upward facing mounts that basically you can just mount it right to the belly of something okay now in our case just just like the aircrafters generator with the onan uh, in it is the spare tire is going to get removed and that is where this generator is going to sit now in my rv that is uh, just underneath my living room couch some rvs can be you know 
front bed, so it would be underneath your bed itself. Um, and depending on what you have right there on the floor, you may or may not want to do a, a floor penetration. Um, like for me, I don't really mind. I think I'm going to do a floor penetration with some big fender washers just to have that thing really, really nice and secure. And just because we're mounting it where your spare tire goes doesn't mean you don't have to, or you're, you're never gonna carry a spare tire again, okay? Um, in my case, I'm probably going to either put a bumper hitch uh, flat mount so that it, basically my spare tire will sit up off the back bumper but it's just because I already have a hitch receiver. Um, now in a lot of our, in a lot of Airstream's cases, you're gonna have space back here to, to put your spare tire underneath there. There's, there's a mount, there's a couple different mounting options online that you can mount it up underneath there and lower it down when you want to. So you can have your spare tire in the back back there. Now me, I can't do that because I already have my large uh, storage container there as well as my sewer hose um, and, and uh, flagpole buddy system back there. So, you know, I don't have any space in the back underneath the RV to mount my spare tire. Um, but again, I do have off the back, I have a, a hitch. Now, there might be the possibility of being able to, to, to do it on the front side there, um, just because there's still a lot, of, a lot of space and a lot of clearance underneath there. Uh, I'm just not sure exactly where I'm gonna put it yet, so we're not gonna talk about that yet. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do to go and get the generator mounted is, of course, remove the spare tires. So we're gonna drop this out and then undo the bolts on the spare tire mount. There's only a few of them, so let's go ahead and rip those out. All right, so the spare tire mount uh, holes are just a three quarter inch bolt, and you can just go ahead and hook up. And now that's down. Now here on my flying cloud, I have an aftermarket couch in here. Um, of course, if you have the stock couch, or if you have a front bed, option and this is going to be underneath your bed your mounting points for this generator are going to be underneath down here okay so i'm personally just going to go remove this couch out of the way some of you might just have to remove some cushions and maybe like a base piece of wood or maybe uh the little front piece it just depends on your couch your bed your whatever but you want to be able to have access to the space for the mounting all right so we went ahead and pre-drilled from the bottom side just a very very tiny little hole and then here i've already drilled out for our big huge we have a four inch bolt then we have basically a rubber fender washer and then a metal fender washer and that's how that goes through the floor and i'm doing that just to try and isolate as much as possible okay so what i'm doing on the bottom side of the rv is because we have this little uh, three quarter inch um, brace down here as i'm setting these rubber isolators basically on the bolts for the mounting points of the generator that way it'll set it down as you can see, it's, it's really close to flush. When it compresses, it'll be flush. That way we can get that just below that. All right, so now we got the generator up in place. We got our bolts threaded through and just the washers and nuts started. So now I'm gonna go on the inside hold while I have Tyler go and tighten up from the bottom side to get this all mounted and secured. All right, so now I got my generator AC input side. I got it uh, kind of just set up here on the back side, zip tied up out of the way, and then up into the box, which I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up and then make these connections in the box. Here, all I'm doing is stripping back some of the wiring, getting it into a wiring nut, and then uh, putting electric tape around that connection to make it nice and tight and securing this box. All right, so now I got this all done and tightened up. I went ahead and made my connections and uh, this is all ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the DC side set up for the positive and negative and go from there. All right, so now this generator is super, super simple. You got your plug for your remote inside, but you just got a negative that goes right there. And now my positive is gonna go right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that set up and then zip tied all up and clean. Okay, so you can see my uh, black and red wire that come in from the top there. That is the main battery cables. And I again, I just rerouted them over there and around to the side to inside the generator. Uh, or to the side of the generator for the main DC cabling. So now for me in my application, because my batteries have already been relocated, I just went ahead and reused the existing battery cables that were from the original stock battery. Now in your situation, if your batteries are still in that front battery box, you can just make a good connection. I would probably use a one aught cable to go ahead and make that connection from the batteries straight to the generator for your positive and negative. But uh, depending on your situation, you're gonna have to figure that out if you've already moved your batteries, et cetera, et cetera. But you gotta make sure you have a nice, good, solid, DC connection for starting that generator because it is a lot of amperage to get it started. Okay, so for the propane, basically I needed a T fitting to go right here off of where my main propane line comes down. That goes down to a half inch flare off, off the side. I think these are both uh, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, and uh, a one half. But um, so essentially this, this T's off and then I have a propane line that goes down and feeds the, the male end down there. 
So again, we're just with this right here and this female to female adapter for this side. Now that all goes right there. Again, link in the description below where you can buy all these pieces, but that's how we're getting the propane done. All right, so here's the propane finished. Again, there on the far right, you can see the male end coming in from the main propane tank set. It goes into a female to female adapter. That's 5 eighths to 5 eighths female. And then into a T that is a 5 eighths, 5 eighths, half inch T. What that means is we got 5 eighths, 5 eighths, and one half. That way I can just basically keep my regular propane going straight through. And then I just teed right off. I got that zip tied and cleaned up to the side here. and goes right into the generator. Okay, so I used my cutting wheel to go ahead and take off a chunk of the bottom of the exhaust because otherwise the exhaust is basically flush with the bottom here, okay? And then the bend is just a little bit too much. So now that I've got this cut off, I can get the exhaust tight, much, much, much tighter against the, the, uh, the back of the support here and shoot it out that way. All right, to make your exhaust connection, it's very simple. You just have an exhaust clamp and it just gets right on there like that. And we're gonna tighten up these two bolts real tight. That's gonna close that down. I'm gonna shoot my exhaust out that way and I'll show you that routing here in just a minute. All right, so here's a nice, better uh, up close shot of the exhaust. Um, so again, I just cut this pipe that comes off the main muffler um, up to uh, basically have, have a full inch um, coming down for the stub. And then this went over and exhaust clamped on. And now I got that angled out that way. Okay, so the exhaust comes out the bottom there. I got two exhaust hangers that I just used some L brackets uh, to help keep it um, where I wanted it. And then that just comes out the side here. Now you do wanna make sure that this is a downward slope and pitch. It's very hard to tell uh, in the video and everything like that. But basically you want this to drain away because um, uh, propane burns and it creates a lot of humidity. So basically this would fill up with moisture. And if it's pitched that way, you're gonna end up with a pool of water in that corner. <laughs> And uh, you, you need to get that out because water is going to eventually just corrode this type of thing. So again, a couple of exhaust hangers pitched out. And just so you can see from the side, it just kind of barely pokes out past the body um, to uh, it, make sure that the exhaust goes away from the rig. All right, so as we are nearing getting ready to start this thing for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and put oil in it. The oil dipstick is right here. I just unscrewed that took that out. Now I'm using 10W30. Um, you can use 15W30, um, depending on your area. I mean, you might want to use a little bit different oil, but I'm using 10W30 and the manual says 1.7 quarts. So we'll see what this takes. So now with the uh, necessary 1.7 quarts of oil, uh, the exhaust is hooked up. I'm going ready to go ahead and test this thing out, make sure everything works properly. Uh, and then the last thing I'm still gonna do for me is tie it into my auto start and stop via my Victron setup, which I'll still show you guys that. But typically, uh, most people are going to do this are just going to get the uh, remote panel, which is just a, a panel you'll mount somewhere inside your RV, depending where you want to go. You have to run the wires down and to the generator, um, but it's just a simple plug. There's no additional wiring. It's just running the wires themselves to the generator. Again, your application is going to be different than mine, but uh, uh, again, I'm just going to do it so it comes auto on and off through my Victron system. But let's go ahead and start this sucker up. All right, so let me just show you how easy this thing is to start. First, I'm going to go and just open this up. Now, inside here, we have uh, a pretty simple setup, right? You have your uh, AC breaker, which there's a reset button there. And then you have your uh, primer for um, gas, uh, whenever you do gasoline, okay? Obviously that is not relevant when you're running off propane, which is what I'm doing. The fuel selection switch is just inside on the side down here, okay? Uh, this, this is it right here. <sighs> Go, right now it's down, it's on propane. If I lift it up, let me get my hand in there. You can see where it shows gas up, LP down. So if I was running on gasoline, I would twist this all the way up. Boom, and now it's ready to run on the gasoline. But for me, running it on the propane, it goes all the way down. Can I help you guys? I'm trying to record a video. You guys can't just let me record my stuff. Can I help you? Hmm? Frank, Frank, can I help you? Okay. And you too, monkey? Really? All right. So to start the generator, it is probably the simplest way I've ever seen a generator start. You literally just push the button. That's it. 
it's going through its little cycle right now and And just like that, it started up. I mean, the, the, the one button push is so nice. I mean, uh, different generators all operate differently. I've had an Onan generator before, and you know, you have to basically send that start signal as it's cranking over. Um, and if you don't hold it long enough, it doesn't crank all the way over. You know, you gotta do it again, whatever. Um, but it's, it's a nice one button click, and it goes through its process by itself. Um, same thing, if it was on uh, gasoline, and you push that button, it would, it's gonna do its self priming function. It's going to pull the fuel up from uh, you know, your source. It's, I mean, it can't be more simple than that. Let's talk just real quick about the rake and procedure of the generator. As you can hear it running right now, um, I got it up to 50% load at this point. But the rake and procedure is as follows, okay? You basically wanna be turning this on, and for the first 30 minutes, you just wanna have that circuit breaker that's on it turned to off. That way there's no load for the first 30 minutes. Then you're gonna to wanna to turn that circuit breaker on. Obviously, everything should be operating inside your coach at that point. And then you're gonna put a 50% load on it, okay? Now, 50% load doesn't mean it has to be exactly 2,000 watts, because it's a 4,000 watt generator, okay? Just approximate, okay? Right, right now, I think I'm pulling about 1,400, 1,500 watt range, and that's perfectly fine for the 50% load. You're gonna do that for two hours. After that, you're gonna to wanna to go to three quarter load, or about 75% load, um, for another two hours. So again, ideally close to about 3,000 watts. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna try and get the, up to like 25, 2,800 watts. Um, but obviously, like right now in fall, good weather, It's I, I don't need to be running air conditioning or anything, so I'm gonna have to just turn on a bunch of stuff to try and get this thing uh, to energy draw up that high. But anyways, the point is 30 minutes at no load, two hours at 50%, and two hours at three quarter and then that is your break-in. After that initial break-in procedure of the uh, 30 to two, um, you're, you're good to go. You can be running your generator you know, at idle to full load, um, doing whatever you need to do. Now the first oil change, okay? First oil change sh should be in between 25 to 100 hours. Yes, I said 25 to 100 hours. And what that means is if at 25 hours, you're good, you're at home, you can do an oil change, great, do it. If you're out for the weekend and you need the generator to be running for three days straight and right there you're already taking up you know uh 24 48 72 hours that's okay as well you can get up to 100 hours in that initial break-in period before you do any of your first oil change no big deal exact same thing to shut it down you just click the button one time and it shuts down by itself um, again super super nice i love i love the ease of that now again i'm going to go ahead and wire this up um which again the plug is sitting right here on the side right here okay now typically you're going to just run your remote panel um to this whether you do it right here through the floor and you have the remote panel on the inside or somewhere else all right so for the auto start and stop feature of the generator for me using the victron system uh it's actually quite simple because it's just a single wire um that is giving the signal um, to the generator to both start and to stop. So it's the same wire, there's not two separate wires. Now, if you find yourself doing this or something remotely similar to it, um, you can see I have one black wire coming in right here. And basically what I do is I have that tied in to the blue wire that's on this pigtail. Okay, and this pigtail is just the four wire pigtail that you can order. Um, I believe one is for priming, one is for the hour meter, one is to start it, and then the, the black is ground. So you can see I have my black wire here, just tied into ground and then the technically what is the blue wire coming off the pigtail goes out and then to inside the rv now just as before with my conduit i basically just ran that black wire under the bottom side of the rv you can kind of see it still right there and then tucks up and goes in through my wheel well now i have the wire routed up here in through where all my victron stuff is at and basically what i'm going to do is set up a system of two relays uh, that work off of the Serbo GX because that is a standard relay that open is a normally open or normally closed type of thing. Now, because all this does, okay, all, all I'm doing is I'm basically grounding this out. Okay, I'm basically attaching this to negative just for a half a second to send that signal, just like you push the button, click. That's all you need to do. But now to accomplish that, if it's normally open or normally closed, it's going to stay that way the whole time. So it would be sending the signal the whole time, and that's not how this is going to work 
So we need a relay that can basically receive a normally open or normally closed signal, send a pulse to the generator for half a second um, to start or to stop, and then cut power, right? No, no, nothing active going through this anymore. So that is this wiring diagram, and that is how this works. It's a very simple thing to do. I know this wiring diagram looks a little bit complex, but really it's not that difficult. I did it on a previous build. It's two relays, they're like 30 bucks a piece on Amazon, and then you got full automation through your Victron system or whatever other system you have. I'm not sure if there's other products out there that have a simple relay for generator start and stop. Um, this would work the same type of way. If you have any questions about it, make sure to drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. All right, now, if you are doing the Victron version, if you have Victron and you have a Serbo GX and you wanna use this to control your generator, here's what you gotta do. Okay, first off, go down to settings, go all the way down to relay, and there's two relays on the Serbo GX. There's relay one, relay two. So what you do is you go into whichever relay you want to wireless to, I selected relay one, and you select generator, start, stop. Once you have that selected, it will pop up in generator, start, stop with all the options, okay? Now, um, I've already done this, but I'm gonna show you. So basically what you do is you go down to uh, your settings and you can program this to run a number of different ways, okay? Now, the way I did it is I basically have it come on and I'm actually gonna see, if, let's see if I can edit some of this right now. So, uh, all right, so battery state of charge. I want it to come on and off when the batteries get below a certain percentage. Now, I actually wanna change this to 20%. And I don't use the whole quiet hours thing, but if you have questions about that, feel free to drop in the comments and I'll answer. Um, quiet hours is just determined hours and you can set different values. So 20%, the, bat, the generator is going to automatically come on and it's going to start once the condition is reached the 20% for more than one minute. And again, you can change that setting. I'm going to have it stop when it reaches 30%. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. You can change this to whatever you want. You want to charge it all the way up, charge it all the way up. And I might change this going down the road, but that's what I got that set to for now. I also have it set for battery voltage because just in case the state of charge fails, I also have the voltage set up as well. I just turned it to, you know, 12 volts to come on, blah, blah, blah. Pretty simple to do. There's other things you can do. I also have it on periodic run, basically, so it runs um, its maintenance cycle type thing. Um, so if it's run for four hours within the past 30 days, it's not going to run this. Now, if their generator is not run for 30 days, uh, it's going to start the generator and I have it set to start at three o'clock in the afternoon, it'll run for one hour and that's it, it'll turn off. That's pretty straightforward. Again, there's multiple other things you can do to it. I just did that. And uh, just to show you how this works is, uh, again, aside from the automatic side of things, I can just swipe over and I can start it. Now the relays I have are back in there. Can't really see them, but uh, again, the wiring diagram I'm going to put up on the screen is going to show you exactly how to wire this stuff. It's very simple. It's just a positive and negative wire um, from a load source and then a ne negative all the way to the generator for that uh, pigtail. But I'm going to just show you. We're going to go and turn this on. And in five, four, three, two, one, it's going to send the signal. the generator is on. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it or not, um, but the generator is on. Now I can also show you when my transfer switch takes the transfer. Right now it's still pulling from shore power. That's why it shows two legs in. But here in just a moment, my transfer switch will automatically click over to the generator. Oh, there it goes. Right as, right as I touched the screen, I just didn't want the screen to fall asleep. Uh, and now it's showing the 125 volts coming from the generator on leg one. The inverter is analyzing that and it's about to transfer load here in just a moment. You'll see the amperage, see? And now it's transferred the load to the generator. So now the generator is running everything in full. Pretty straightforward. Now what's really nice is I can go and stop the generator. Stop. I wanted to show you the transfer switch back to shore power immediately. Boom, now it's gonna send that signal. Generator is turned off. 
just like that. I just heard it click, click, click. Um, so basically it already is pulling from short. It happens instantaneously. Um, the transfer switch does it automatically. However, the inverter, uh, just because of the multiplus inverter, it takes a second to analyze it to ensure your power is good and then it transfers the load just like that. Well, that's really it for the install. If you guys have any questions about this, um, about anything in, in the process of what we're doing from the transfer switch to mounting the generator, wiring the generator to propane, to exhaust, to the automatic start and stop. If you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. If you stuck around this long, make sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Why Not RV. Bye.